Valorant boasts a roster of over 20 distinct agents, each with their own unique playstyle and abilities. With so many things to learn, mastering them all can be quite a challenge. To simplify the process, here's a fundamental rule for every agent in Valorant so that even if you don't play each one, you at least have a step up on your opponents. We'll go by role starting with the Duelists. Kicking things off with Reyna, she has the potential to either be the most disgusting smurf agent able to carry even your silver friend's so-called ELO Hell games, or do the opposite and become absolutely useless with no utility to fall back on. What's the big difference? It's all confidence. If you're thinking about playing Reyna, you already failed the first rule. Because in order to play her well, you must have stupidly high confidence regardless of if it's really justified or not. Reyna only gets value if she's constantly taking fights, dueling anyone daring to phase her with no concern for the route at hand effectively forcing her opponents to deal with her first before they can consider their own plans. If you don't have the confidence to do that, or if your confidence is shaky, and it leaves you hanging after you miss an easy kill or two, or three, or four, then you're ultimately going to struggle. The truth is, is that if you're not having a good game, you can't just go more passively relying on utility, because you don't have any. Sure, you can get some KD kills by baiting your Sova, but that's not how you should be playing the game, at least not to win. But don't worry though, not every agent has rules this strict. Phoenix is a simple agent with a simple kit. So our tip for the Fireboy is to farm ultimate orbs every chance you get. With one of the easiest to use and lowest costing ultimates in the entire game, Phoenix can be insane when he's ulting 3-4 to four times in a single half. Ask your team to smoke off orbs and help you take control of them. It'll be extremely worth it in the long run when you keep getting extra lives. The key to success with Yoru is being unpredictable and constantly adapting to the situation. His abilities allow him to create decoys, teleport, and blind his enemies with a flashbang. To make the most of Yoru's kit, it's important to master these abilities and use them to constantly keep your enemies guessing. Additionally, Yoru's mobility makes him great for quickly changing positions and escaping danger. Keep an eye on the map and be ready to adapt to any situation at any moment. Playing mind games with your opponents can also be an effective strategy with Yoru. So don't be afraid to mix things up and keep your enemies on their toes. Neon might be fast, but it's important to always wait for your team's setup utility before making your move. When Neon is in her high gear state, she is obviously running with no weapon out, making her extremely vulnerable. Knowing this, it's crucial for Neon players to make the most out of their teammates' setup. Breach stuns and sky flashes are her bread and butter, since she can quickly eliminate enemies who are incapacitated. Take advantage of this in every game and you're on your way to success. Raze is one of the strongest duelists in Valorant right now when her utility is used correctly. So our tip for Raze is to never waste utility. Take fights with and around whatever you toss out. Many Raze players will often nade and boom bot their enemies but are afraid of swinging to fight them. Raze's utility is meant to displace enemies and will rarely be enough to finish them off unless they are caught in some disruptive ability. So our tip is to avoid wasting your utility if you're not planning on peeking the enemies being displaced. Now before I move on with the other agents, I quickly want to mention that we just brought out a new chorus with Ye. If you're serious about Valorant and you want to learn, we really urge you to check it out. It's available over on our website ProGods.com and just like many other cool benefits, it comes with the $8 a month subscription. Now over to the controllers. On Brimmy, you need to never waste smokes. Consider if what you're smoking is worth it for your team in the long run. Obviously Brim gets 3 smokes per round, so how you use them can literally win or lose your team rounds. Consider areas of the map where you may be able to use a flash or other kinds of utility to take that space. Since your smokes are so valuable, you always need to get the most out of them. Omen is completely different from Brim as far as smokes go, but our tip for the Ghost is to flash for your team every single round. Never go around without using it. We see way too many Omen mains not getting enough value out of their flash on both attack and defense. A good way to ensure value from your OP flash is to look at the enemy team's ultimate abilities. If they have something like a Killjoy, Sky, or Fate ultimate, you might be able to kill their entire sight before it happens. You rarely want to end a round with your flash going unused. As of this video, Harbor is the newest controller to the Valorant squad and the community is still trying to find out the best way to play him. Knowing this, our tip to the budding Harbor gods is to always play around your code. Harbor's most unique part of his kit is his bullet shield that he can throw down almost instantly. Make sure you are getting value from this ability, whether it's to ensure a safe plant for your team or to give you extra space to frag out. Mastering your cove unlocks endless potential when playing Harbor on both attack and defense. Moving on to arguably the highest skill ceiling controller, we of course have Astra. Make sure you're having impact everywhere on the map. Stun, pull, and smoke off teammates' utility, contact, and callouts. Astra has the ability to always have an impact on every fight unlike any other agent in the game. If you're stuck holding B while the enemy goes A, that's no problem for a good Astra main. Talk to your team and ask what would be best for them if the enemy were to push out. The more you communicate, the more you can take over games with your global utility. Lastly for our controllers, we of course have Viper. Good Vipers look to always apply pressure to areas of the map your team might not go every round. A perfect example of this is on Icebox mid or bind A site. In almost every pro game you watch, Vipers will have mid smoked off for their team. Not so their team can go mid, but so the enemy is forced to commit players to lock down the area. Good Vipers know how to permanently apply pressure 
pressure around the map and condition the enemy to create an advantage. Moving on now to start our Darden Flash Agents, we of course have the Initiators. Sova has been a Valorant staple since the very start of the game. Our Sova tip is to always know what your darts are scanning and keep track of the timer. Lineups are important in order to not only master Sova, but to also get the most possible value from every dart. Since it's up to only a few times around, you want to always get valuable information from it. The best Sova players have mastered this before anything else. Not to mention that a bad dart might not seem like a big deal, but it puts a false sense of security into your team, leading them to not clearing angles that could be dangerous. With Bind coming back into the map rotation, Sky is being picked more than ever in solo queue. So our tip for her is to always flash for information often and use that information to help your team. Most players know that Sky's blind gives you information on whether or not an enemy has been blinded, but not every Sky player takes advantage of this info to help their team. Take space or call for your team to rotate with this information and take over the map. Since the flash is recharged, using one at the start of the round is almost no cost to your team in the future of the round. Breach is all about enabling his teammates, meaning communication with your duelist is key. There should always be a duelist capitalizing off your abilities. A good way to gauge whether you're doing a good job of this or not is when your duelists end up dying, look at your utility. If you have every flash and stun available, then you're doing something wrong. Even on defense, don't be afraid to set up plays with them to take space or stop the enemies before they get in range of a spike site. Breach is all about taking space with your duelists. Make sure you master this aspect of the game for the best result. The Radiant Robot KO is one of the most OP initiators in solo queue. So for him, our tip is to learn good flashes for your teammates. KO's flashes last extremely long and are quiet when thrown from a distance, so knowing good pop flashes on maps where you play him a lot will go a long way, trust me. Being a pocket KO that has your duelist cashing in on kills with almost no effort will have you climbing in no time. And not many KO players know the power of a classic CSGO pop flash, so abuse this in your games. The newest face to the Valorant roster is of course Gecko. And for him, the most important rule by far is to be adaptable. Playing a good Gecko takes a lot of game sense. Since your abilities are really only on a 10 second cooldown, you can in theory use them like 5 or 6 times around. I mean, even his ultimate you can use twice. But with great power comes great responsibility. Use your abilities poorly and instead of 10 seconds, it's more like until the round ends. Plus, just because you can retrieve a Pokemon, does that mean you always should? Going for the Thrash Orb to get a second round of ultimates is always tempting. But even Radiant Geckos often go too far. They greed for it and die like an iron knife out trying to get their 200 HP friend back deep into enemy territory. And then you also have the issue of people not using their stuff at all, saving their 10 second cooldown abilities for Christmas next year. Finding a good balance is the hardest part of Gecko. You want to use your utility as often as possible, but also conservatively as to not lose the recharge. You want to have Wingman to plant, but you don't want to hold on to it all round and only use it for that. It's difficult, so be willing to change your approach, each round just on the fly. And then we have Fade. Fade is in a weird spot in the meta currently with how strong the other initiators are. She's by no means bad, but she's just weaker on some maps. That being said, Fade player's rule should be to end every round with no utility. Even though Fade is fantastic for getting her team information, she is also really strong playing for herself. You should be dogging and eyeing for yourself around every dangerous corner, or before you duel the enemy. Practice this in your solo queue games and I promise you will be winning more duels than ever. The last class of agents we need to cover is our Sentinel, starting with Killjoy. KJ has been the strongest Sentinel in the game ever since Chamber's nerf, but many players still don't know how they should use her kit. Our tip for KJ enthusiasts is to make sure you are fighting alongside your utility correctly. An example of how you can improve on this front is that if your turret is holding an angle, you should be ready to swing and fight off of its content. Many KJ players are too scared and miss out on opportunities to capitalize on their utility. If you have a microwave set up in an area, swing and fight while it's going off since the enemy will be at a disadvantage. It's nice when your nades pick you up three kills for free, but that ace could be yours if you fight properly with your utility. Sage is in a really good spot in the meta and can be picked in a lot of situations. For any Sage gamers out there, our tip for you is to ensure your wall is getting value and not going to waste. What I mean by this is that if you're placing your wall and it's constantly getting destroyed, avoid placing that wall again. It might seem obvious, but a lot of players don't know what makes a good Sage wall. Good Sage walls are able to be defended and disrupt the enemy team's movement. If you're placing a wall that can't be defended, then you're effectively wasting the core of her kit. Killjoy's counterpart has for a long time been Cypher. Cypher is seen by many as the weaker of the two Sentinels, but this is far from the truth. It's just a bit harder to extract the same value out of him as Killjoy. The nature of his utility is designed for you to be creative and unpredictable, so it's fitting for a tip to you to be creative with your setups and how you play. Know how and when to be aggressive. Cypher is equipped with tools to get you information and smokes to help you reposition. Cyphers who aren't afraid to get their hands dirty can take over games like no other Sentinel can. Whether this means having some out-of-the-box trips or creative cages to hide in, treat the battlefield as your canvas. Find out what works and what doesn't for you. Last but not least, we have our boy Chamber. Now, ever since his nerfs, it's been no secret that other agents have had the priority over the Frenchman, but the core of his playstyle has remained the same. So our golden rule for Chamber players is to always be aggressive and fight for space using your anchor as safety. 
Chamber doesn't have a ton of utility to help him frag out, and he is way less safe than he once was, but the ability to instantly teleport will always be strong. You need to fight neutral zones like the Duelist Chamber should have been, or else you're losing a ton of value from your kit before you even get eliminated. Playing aggressive will put you on the right path to being the chamber main you once were. And that will wrap it up for our golden tips for each agent in Valorant. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and comment tips that you think are important on your main agent. Thanks for watching, this has been your host Sergeant Frost, and I will see you all in the next one.